Hey, what's up, Ken Peeps? Let's do some Unit 7 Day 3 practice. Uh, and take a look at this first question, right? We are talking about the self-ionization of water as an endothermic process. We want to use Le Chatelier's principle to predict the value of the pH of water as the temperature of water is decreased from 25 degrees to 10 degrees. Okay, so throwback time here. Heat is going to be on the reactant side if it's an endothermic process. And if we're cooling things down, essentially we're removing heat, which means the equilibrium is going to shift to the left, um, causing these concentrations to go down, right? So as we think about process of elimination, right, we know that it's got to be one of these, right, where the equilibrium is shifting to the left to respond to that stress of the temperature change. And the hydronium ion concentration is going to go down. The trickiest thing about here is trying to figure out what's going on with pH, right? So just as a for example, right, remember that Kw is equal to hydronium times hydroxide ion concentrations. And at 25 degrees Celsius, these are 1 times 10 to the minus 7 each, which makes Kw equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Now, in pure water, these two concentrations have to stay the same. If they're going down, right, uh, if these concentrations are decreasing, I'm going to just come up with a value of 1 times 10 to minus 8, right, which is smaller than 1 times 10 to minus 7. I know those negative exponents are tricky. Um, and, you know, our, our value of Kw has changed. You know, the only time we're going to see a change in the value of K is when we um, have a temperature change. So it makes sense that the value of K has changed, but what's going on with the pH, right? Uh, at 25 degrees Celsius, you know, focus in here on hydronium ion concentration, the negative log of 1 times 10 to the minus 7 is going to give us a pH of 7, right? As you think about what's going to go on here, right, our concentration of hydronium ion has gone down. When I take the negative log of this value, we got pH is equal to 8, right? So as you think about what's going on with uh, this question, it's still neutral. It's still water because these concentrations are the same. Uh, however, our pH, or what we consider neutral, has changed, right? Um, we've shifted because of the temperature change. So pH 8 is now our neutral pH in this uh, example here. So just keep in mind when hydronium ion concentration goes down, pH is going to go up. Right, so a little bit tricky there, a lot of things to think about. Uh, related here, question number three, we're talking about Kw, which is specific to the self-ionization of water, which is that equation we were looking at in the earlier question. And you're given some values of Kw here, which are a little difficult to kind of interpret, especially when you don't have a calculator. Um, but what you want to notice is as temperature increases, Kw gets bigger. Right. Again, be careful there. It's really tricky with you know, scientific notation using negative exponents, but it's getting bigger. Um, maybe just to help you kind of understand um, what's going on is I'm just going to, you know, use what we did up there in the earlier question and use some nicer numbers. Right. So hydronium ion concentration times hydroxide ion concentration is equal to Kw. This is 1 times 10 to the minus 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. These are each going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 7. So at 25 degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to make up some numbers here that are easier. I know that Kw is getting bigger, right, as I, as I get hotter. So I'm just going to make this up. I know this doesn't really match with what you see there, but just to kind of visually see what's going on, right? The, if Kw is getting bigger as it gets hotter, Right. What that means is these two concentrations must have gotten larger. They still have to be the same because we're talking about pure water here, uh, but they're getting larger, which means, you know, Kw is uh, getting bigger. So maybe just working with some nicer numbers uh, will help you kind of understand this problem uh, and then run through the answer choices. pH of water is 7 from 0 to 40. Well, when I change temperature, right, the concentration of hydronium ion changes. So pH is going to change. It's still neutral in both cases, right? Because concentrations are the same, but it's no longer going to have a pH of 7. As temperature increases, the pH of water decreases, right? Well, here, again, my hydronium ion concentration at 25 is going to be pH 7, but at the higher temperature, the pH is actually going to go down. 
right? Again, still neutral. We just shifted what we're saying the neutral pH is. Um, so uh, that's actually ruled out and answered uh, at the same time. Uh, ionization of water is exothermic. If you were confused or unsure about this one, you can always write it in and think about, you know, is this true, right? If it's exothermic and I increase the temperature or add heat, right, it's going to shift away from that addition and these concentrations are going to go down if it were exothermic. And notice that what's in the data table and the, you know, the simplified example that I've given you here, that's, that's showing the opposite, right? As I get hotter, Kw is getting bigger, which means these concentrations should be getting bigger. And so it's not an endothermic, sorry, it's not an exothermic process. We kind of saw this in the question um, up above. It's it's endothermic, right? And so notice how this does make sense. When I heat up an endothermic process, it's going to shift away from that, uh, make more ions, which is what we have happening. Um, so it is an endothermic process. Um, but in terms of this question, it's asking kind of the correct answer is trying to think about what's going on with pH as you change the temperature. All right, next, we got lots and lots of math here uh, without a calculator, which is really sad, right? Um, pH of a given solution is 4.80. What is the hydronium ion concentration? Uh, as you work through questions like this without a calculator, here's my suggestion. You don't have to do it this way, but what I like to do is I make to, uh, like to make a little list um, of whole number pH values that flank the value I'm working with. So I might do pH 3, 4, and 5 the hydronium ion concentrations that correspond to those, right? This can be one times 10 to the minus three, one times 10 to the minus four, and one times 10 to the minus five. You know, I, I wouldn't go much more than that, especially when you're pressed for time. Um, and then as you try to work through these, right, focus on the exponents first, right? I know that 10 to the minus nine is, you know, going to be around pH nine, this is gonna be around pH two, right? So I can, I can eliminate a couple of answer choices right away. Uh, they're just not gonna be close enough at all to what I'm working with. These two, you know, is where things get a little trickier, right? I know it's gonna be around pH four and around pH five. Well, I don't really know, right? It's tricky without a calculator. So that's where this is gonna come into play and I think be helpful. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to look at that value 2.4 times 10 to the minus four, that is bigger than one times 10 to the minus four. So it's going to fall above it. Be careful. It's tricky with these negative exponents above it, which means this hydronium ion concentration is going to have a pH between three and four. Uh, and then, you know, just to confirm, as you look at this one, 1 1.6 times 10 to the minus five, that is bigger than one times 10 to the minus five. So it's going to fall above it here. Um, it's going to be less than 1 times 10 minus 4. So I'm going to fall right in between there, pH 4 and 5. That's my winner. So some tricky stuff to do here when you don't have a calculator. Uh, another example here in the next one, you're told the hydroxide ion concentration. What is the solution's pH? Very tricky stuff here. Um, you're given hydroxide ion concentration. Again, notice what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use the nice numbers um, that kind of flank this one, right? One times 10 to the minus three, one times 10 to the minus four, and one times 10 to the minus five. Be careful when working with hydroxide. These correspond to my POHs of three, four, and five. And I'm looking for pH. Oof. So remember the relationship between pH and POH. They sum to 14. So if POH is three, this is 11, this is 10, and this is nine. And then just kind of do the same thing, right? Four times 10 to the minus four right? That is bigger than one times 10 to the minus four. So it's going to be above it here based on how I've organized this. Um, and so it's going to fall somewhere in here and I'm looking for the pH. So I know the pH is going to fall somewhere between um, 10 and 11. So that's my winning answer here. Obviously be on the lookout. You're going to see things like this all the time, right? Um, that is trying to get you confusing pH and pOH, right? So the pOH is going to fall between three and four, but the pH is between 11 and 10. So lots of places to make mistakes in these questions. 
One of them is just kind of distinguishing between, you know, pH and pOH. All right, next up, uh, again, really similar question. Depending on your math level, you may not have to work things through like this. This is just, you know, what I prefer to do. Um, as I uh, try to figure this out, again, uh, I'm just going to make myself a little list. I'm going to do 8, 9, 10. Hydronium ion concentration is going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 8, 1 times 10 to the minus 9, and 1 times 10 to the minus 10. Hydroxide ion concentration is going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 6, right? The product has to be 1 times 10 to the minus 14, 1 times 10 to the minus 5, and 1 times 10 to the minus 4. pOH, right, is going to be then 6, 5, and 4. And then I'm just going to roll through this, right? Most basic means highest pH or lowest pOH, right? So most basic is going to be down here. Uh, in how I've organized my particular chart, right? So pH of 9.2, that's pretty basic, right? That's going to fall in here. That's definitely in the basic range. 2.2 uh, .2 times 10 to the minus 5, right? Uh, that's hydroxide ion. Be very careful here, right? 2.2 .2 times 10 to the minus 5 is bigger than 1 times 10 to the minus 5, but notice how I organized it the bigger values are going to fall beneath 1 times 10 to the minus 5. So I can't really tell between A and B, which is going to be the more basic of the two, right? pOH of 9.8, oof, that's going to be way up here, right? I don't even have it on my, on my little chart. And that's going to be way up in the acidic range for the pH, right? So this one I can eliminate. Um, and then lastly, we've got hydronium ion concentration, 9.9 .9 times 10 to the minus 11. Again, not on my chart, but it's going to be even further down here, even more basic. So for questions, you know, 6, 7, and 8, it can be overwhelming when you do not have a calculator. But I encourage you to use kind of those nice whole number pHs and their corresponding concentration values. And it's really important to be comfortable with the relationship that you see between pH and pOH, right? They sum to 14, and the product of these is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So just some things to be on the lookout for. Uh, doesn't make it easy, but uh, definitely something um, to be aware of and something to practice. Okay, here we go. Question numero nine. It says, we add enough base to a solution to cause the pH to increase from 7.5 to 8.5. This means that. Okay, um, for a question like this, it's really getting you to tie in what's going on with the pH unit and the concentration of the ions. Uh, to help you better understand this, I'm going to take a look at this simulation, right? We use this in class. I'm gonna take a look at just battery acid, okay? And I'm gonna start with a 10th of a liter of uh, battery acid. Notice that my initial pH of this solution is 1. And notice my hydronium ion concentration is 1 times 10 to the minus 1. Now, I'm going to dilute this by adding water, right? Now, as I add water, right, notice what's happening to my concentration of hydronium. It's going down because those moles, that same number of moles, is now in a larger volume. And the pH is going up. Well, let's get that change to happen over entire pH unit, right? So I started at pH 1. Let's get up to pH 2. Hopefully I can get this to work out exactly. Burn my money. I think I'm going to miss it a little bit. Oh, got it. Okay, so notice how my pH has gone up 1 unit, and I've gone from 1 times 10 to the minus 1 to 1 times 10 to the minus 2. Or in standard notation, I started at 0.1 and now I'm at 0.01, right? This is 10 times bigger. Uh, my initial is 10 times bigger uh, than where I ended up. Uh, and that's kind of this question and kind of what we're thinking about here. You really want to be comfortable with logarithms, which I know, you know, even after years and years is not <laughs> easy for me to be comfortable with. I, I wouldn't say that I'm comfortable with logarithms ever. Uh, but part of why we use the logarithmic scale is to make things numbers that are really small easier to work with 
Um, so if we're going from 7.5 to 8.5, you need to recognize we're talking about a factor of 10 change, right? And if we are getting more basic, that means we're increasing the concentration of hydroxide. So again, lots going on, easy places to make mistakes, um, difficult to do, but you know, just takes, like everything takes practice. Uh, next one coming up number 10, right? As you look at this one, it says the pH of a solution prepared by the addition of 200 mils of 0 0.04 molar sodium hydroxide to 600 mils of distilled water is closest to. Uh, okay, so we're looking for pH. Be very careful here. Uh, we're working with a base and it's a strong base. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So super important that you can identify strong bases, right? As group one or group two metal hydroxides. And from there, right, uh, use that information to solve a problem like this, right? If I have 0.004 molar sodium hydroxide, that's the same as saying I have 0.004 molar hydroxide ion, which is the ion I'm focused on when it comes to the pH or pOH of a solution. I can kind of ignore the sodium here. And I have 200 milliliters of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this for number of moles. I'm just using the molarity equation here. And, you know, without a calculator, I'm going to use scientific notation, right? So my concentration is 4 times 10 to the minus 3. And my volume initially is 2 times 10 to the minus 1. Now, remember, that's got to be in liters. So 200 milliliters is really 0.2 liters, which is why I did 2 times the minus 1 for my volume. And then to solve for x, 4 times 2 is going to be 8. And I add my exponent, so times 10 to minus 4. That is my moles of hydroxide. Now, if I add distilled water, I'm not changing the number of moles, right? Kind of like what you saw in that last question. The moles of hydroxide is staying the same, but I'm changing the volume in which it occupies. Right, so my concentration of uh, hydroxide, I've got eight times 10 to the minus four moles, but now it's in 200 plus 600 or 800 total milliliters or 0.8 liters or eight times 10 to the minus one liters. So my concentration eight divided by eight is one. Now I'm subtracting my exponents 10 to the minus three molar right? So this is my concentration of hydroxide. And so if I take the negative log of 1 times 10 to the minus 3, I get 3. And I'm tempted, right? But remember, this is my pOH, which is 3. So if I'm looking for the pH, remember pH plus pOH is 14. So if I know that the pOH is 3, that means that the pH is going to be 11. You know, lots, lots of places to go awry here. Very difficult stuff. Uh, question number 11. This one is asking you just to think about the relationship between Ka and Kb, which is given by Kw. And, um, you know, recognize here that uh, we have a pH of our hydrobromic acid solution um, to be 5. Now, when we're solving for Ka, again, I'm going to use an ice table here, but hopefully you'll get to the point where you don't have to necessarily set up the ice table. But I'm going to set it up here just to help everybody get to the same place. And then you can modify as you need to um, to move things along a little faster, right? So I know that this is initially 0 0.1 uh, and this is initially zero. Be careful. I know the pH, right? So I don't have to use X. I know that this is, uh, if the pH is five, right? Let me be a better teacher. If the pH is five, then I know the hydronium ion concentration, right? I just do 10 to the negative five is equal to X, right? Or one times 10 to the negative five. So I know this. If I know the pH, I know the hydronium ion concentration. And because everything here is at a one-to-one -one ratio, I know that they all change by that same amount. 
So my concentrations of hydronium and the uh, hypobromite ion are each one times 10 to the minus five. Technically, this is going down by one times 10 to the minus five. And you can subtract that if you want, right? Uh, and get, you know, 0 0.09999, right? Uh, but because I don't have a calculator, I'm just going to say this is still about 0.1. It's kind of like doing the X is small approximation, even though I know what X is, right? And so to solve for Ka of this acid, I'm just going to plug it into my uh, Ka expression for this equation, right? So for this equation here, Ka is equal to hydronium times hydrox. No. Sorry, I saw Kw there and just got wild. Uh, times the hypobromate ion over the HBRO. Remember, I'm not including the water, it's a pure liquid. And I'm gonna plug in these values, right? So these are each one times 10 to the minus five. And the initial concentration is 0.1 or in scientific notation, one times 10 to the minus one. So without a calculator, you know, multiply one times one, I add my exponents and then I divide by one times 10 to the minus one. So one divided by one is, I'm gonna bring it down here, is one times 10, I'm subtracting minus nine. So my Ka is one times 10 to the minus nine. So by default, this is the right answer. Uh, I'll probably be a little more tr tricky on the actual quiz or the test, right? Um, and give you a couple of answers where Ka is one times 10 to the minus nine. But then recognize when you see pKa, just like with pH or pOH, it means you're taking the negative log of the thing that follows. In this case, we want to take the negative log of Ka to identify the pKa, right? So the negative log of 1 times 10 to the minus 9, just like in the other instances, you're focused on the exponent. And so it's going to be a value of 9 for the pKa. Woo! All right. Uh, last one. For today, right, we're looking at the hydronium ion concentration, or we want to define, identify the hydronium ion concentration um, for uh, 0.004 molar HX, and we're given the value of Ka. Um, again, here's going to be an example where I try to uh, expedite things. If you are uncomfortable with the x, you know, the me speeding things up. You can always come back and set your ice table up, but remember, right, that you want to get to the point where you get to kind of like Ka is equal to x squared over the initial uh, concentration, in this case, 4 times 10 to the minus 3, where you're already in your head doing the x's small approximation, right? You're already kind of working through and recognizing this that goes on in an ice table for a monoprotic acid, right? Where everything's a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, again, if you're not there yet, set up the ice table, solve it out, make the extra small approximation. But we know Ka is four times 10 to the minus seven. This is four times 10 to the minus three. So I'm gonna multiply these two, we get 10, no, oh, wow, whoa, four times four is 16 times 10 to the minus 10 is equal to x squared. I'm gonna square root here. So we're gonna get, oops, yeah, four times 10 to the minus five as molar, that's the concentration of hydronium ion. So this comes up a lot. You're gonna see it a lot for weak acids. You're gonna see a lot for weak bases um, and just something you wanna be really comfortable with. Um, and it's not easy. So don't be hard on yourself if you are struggling with this unit. Uh, it takes a lot of practice, and even with a lot of practice, it's still really hard. Uh, so just do the best you can. Okay, hope that helps.